If you're going to light or automate your model railroad, whether it's DC or DCC, you're going to want to see these essential electrical tools for your model railroad. I'm Tom Kovicak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. I'm going to give you a list of electrical tools that you're going to need if you want to automate or light up your railroad. It doesn't matter if it's DC or DCC. This pertains to anything in any scale that you want. Number one is a multimeter. You're going to need a multimeter to check the voltage, check the resistance, to check continuity. You're going to be able to check everything with that multimeter and I'm going to show you how. The multimeter doesn't have to be an expensive one like this. You can get a cheap one at Walmart or Home Depot for about $10 or $15. But the only thing that you want to make sure of is it has AC volts, DC volts, continuity that gives you an audible beep on here. And whenever you put your leads together, you'll hear. Okay, ohms to check the resistance of resistors and other components and and if you want to spend the extra money you can have a diode checker and a capacitor checker but we're going to go into that in a little bit there's other tools that you could use for that especially for leds and capacitors number two is going to be a led tester you can pick this up at amazon is very inexpensive it takes a nine volt battery on the inside and what this does if you have a lot of leds to test and you don't know it's like me i use them and then i throw them back in the thing and sometimes i'll throw a bad one back in there but you could test it with this all you have to do is put it in the slots over here and you could and this is uh set up in this is set up in milliamps right there so it starts out with two up to about 35. Uh, I'll put it down in the lower setting right there. The holes are a lot larger than the pins on there. So you basically what you have to do is just make sure that you're holding on to it and to test it. Uh, if you press the button and it lights up, it's good. If it doesn't light up, it's no good. Now you could do the same thing on number one on the multimeter on the diode part okay the only thing different about this if you have an led that the required voltage is higher than what this is putting out it's not going to light the led up it's just going to show a resistance on here okay and that'll be able to tell you whether you have your positive or negative and that's what i use this for here number three you're going to want a servo tester now this is a very inexpensive one it's i think it's about six or seven dollars and it'll test your 9G servos or even larger servos. Now they do have better ones than this. I got the cheapest one there was, and it has three functions on it, and you could test three servos at a time on there. Now the first one is when you run the dial up and down, you'll go from one end to the other. So you could test the full range like that. Okay, push the button and it brings it up into the center position. Bring, press the button again and you'll get it to sweep from the minimum to the maximum. And I'm bringing back to the first one again and you could test the range manually. Now servos are used in anything that moves, including your turnouts. So you're going to want to have that for your essential electrical tools number four is substitution boxes resistance or capacitance here is a resistance substitution box that i put together it was a kit you have to solder all the components on the inside and you have two dowels on it for ohms and k ohms and this is uh, a rough range here there's also one for a capacitive substitution box. And I have one of those also. I just haven't put it back. I just haven't soldered it together yet. So this, this is one type. Okay, here is a, another kind of a resistance substitution 
box with, I wouldn't call it a box, I call it a board, but it has SMD resistors on it and you can be precise as one ohm on here and it goes up to a maximum of, let me see, you could probably get 999 mega ohms on here from z one to 999 and also there is a capacitive substitution box that does the same thing instead of putting jumpers in different places like this one has jumpers on it this one has dip switches on there where you could put in the value of the capacitor that you need and it goes from one microfarad up to 9999 microfarads so and these are good for when you're working on circuits and you don't have the resistors with you and you just want to test them out to see what would be a good fit for the LEDs or or if you're making a five uh, making a circuit from a 555 timer the resistor substitution box and the capacitor substitution box is a great tool and if you have two of them it's even better because you could do both sides of a circuit like on a timer um, that's what I did here with each one of these substitution boxes. These are good tools to have and the ones that you have to solder together, that's a good learning tool for soldering. Number five is a soldering iron. Now I started out with a soldering iron, something similar to this years ago. This is what I learned on. It took me a, a while to learn how to solder. When I first started, I couldn't solder with a crap, but practice, practice, and practice, you get better. Then I found the soldering station. It's a digital soldering station and it works a lot better. It's a lot easier. You could control the temperature on it and it does wonders for your soldering. If you thought you were good soldering with the soldering iron, you're going to be a lot better with the soldering station. And that's not the only one. Then recently, I was introduced to this right here. It fits in the palm of your hand. It's another digital soldering station that does the same thing as this one. This one's about three pounds. This one's about a quarter pound or something. And it does the same thing. It does the same temperatures, has all the same functions on it in just a smaller space. Electronics does wonders for everything, but a soldering iron, you're gonna to have to solder things, whether it's gonna be your tracks, your feeders, your bus wires, anything on there. If you're gonna do components, like I showed you the uh, resistance soldering station that was a kit, you have to solder everything in there. If you're gonna do any kind of electronic projects, even if you do it on a breadboard, you're eventually gonna put it on some kind of a circuit board or some permanent part where you're gonna solder it in there and you're gonna need a soldering station or a soldering iron. It's good to start out with a soldering iron. This one's about a 25 watt soldering iron, the one that I normally use to solder all my tracks together on this layout here was the 33 watt soldering iron and i managed to do it because i was a really lousy solderer long time ago but the more you practice the better you get at it and definitely gonna need that skill and need a digital soldering station or if you want to spend the money a resistance soldering station that's really up in the 300 dollars range these right here maybe 75 to 80 dollars this one right here i think was like 49 dollars so you know it's up to you soldering iron soldering station number six and everybody's got these walworts Every electronic thing has wall warts or even little power supplies. I got this power supply out of a printer. Or you could have a bench power supply like this. This one goes up to 30 volts, 5 amps. They make them bigger than that. This is a very inexpensive one. I think it's about $70. This is a dedicated one, 5 volts, 40 amps. 
and you have one, two, three, you have three taps on there for your power on there. And so, and this is very inexpensive, maybe about $20, $20 for this. You can get it in assorted voltages. You, this one here is five volts. You can get them 12 volts. You can get them 24 volts, whatever you need. You're going to need some kind of power supply for your different voltages. This one here, I, this is mostly on the bench for testing stuff. You could, you could set in your voltage up to 30 volts and you could set your maximum amperage up to five amps. This one is a set voltage and amperage and so are these wall warts too. But you can get the, I got a bunch of these at thrift stores, 50 cents a piece. If you're lucky, the thrift store will put them into category, categories by voltage, AC and DC. And if you have any old components, this came from a printer. And down here on my bench, I don't have it, I have it bolted down, but I have an old computer power supply that I did a video on. I did a couple of videos on it. You could take it apart it, and remove all the plugs for it, or they even make circuit boards where you could plug the plugs right into it and you have a, it's like a breakout board for it so you're going to need power supply you're going to need power for all your components these are for your accessories your electronic projects for your lighting for your servos for your electrical components on here that do not have or are not run by track power or dcc power number seven all your component parts. You could never have enough of jumper wires, breadboards, more breadboards, breadboards to do your projects on, and all your miscellaneous parts, stepper motors, connectors, more connectors, servo motors in here. diodes, LEDs, standoffs, transistors, SIP resistors, some more standoffs, and not, not even to mention Arduino components. There's a Nano, here's a Mega, here's a Palulu. If you're into DCC++, you're going to have one of these or or a Uno with a different motor shield. But you're going to need all these little parts, and I'm grouping all of that in together. Uh, any kind of project you're going to do, electrical, it's good to start out on a breadboard with your components and jumpers galore. And right here on the edge of my workbench, I have a small circuit board or small breadboard with assorted jumpers on there also within reach of everything. There's other sizes. You got these sizes right here. You can get them in assorted sizes, assorted lengths, colors, different kind of connectors. You could get male to male, male to female, female to female jumpers. Anything. I have a whole tote full of boxes down here of electronic components that I use. I may only use them once. Like you get a hundred transistors in a box for a few dollars. And in the projects that I've done in the past six months, I maybe used about 10 of them. Uh, these LEDs, I haven't used any of these yet because I got them off of Christmas tree lights. Really cheap. These are standoffs for my projects, for the circuit boards. Here's SIP resistors in various uh, denominations. More standoffs right here, the plastic ones. And we got some diodes right here. I got one of these the capacitors. I got a whole bunch of resistors. I got a whole box of resistors, a shoebox full of resistors. Any assortment of any kind of components is good to have. So that's my list for today. All of this stuff, 
I think every one of these things I bought on Amazon. There's only one thing that I did not buy on Amazon, and that was this right here. You could probably find it on Amazon, but I got this through Banggood. It was uh, given to me through Banggood. That is the seven essential electrical tools that you'll need on your model railroad. So have fun with it. And coming up on Monday and Tuesday, July 15th and 16th is Amazon Prime Days. So check out my Amazon link in the description down here and you could get everything that I have that I showed you on Amazon. So have fun with your model railroad, have fun with your projects, and have fun shopping on Amazon. And until the next time, we'll see you.